Morning Fret friends, uh, slightly different video today. I've just had a guitar delivered by Parcel Force and I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm going to do an unboxing because there's damage to the box on the outside. Um, I didn't have to sign for it because Royal Mail, well not Royal Mail, Parcel Force's policy at the moment because of social distancing, you don't sign, you just have to be in. And if you're in, they'll stand away and they'll sign for you. Um, but I always tell them sign on checks. Anyway, so I've just received this guitar. Now the problem with Parcel Force and Royal Mail sending instruments with them and don't get me wrong right and I'm not slagging no one off because I actually do work for Royal Mail but Royal Mail and Parcel Force do not insure musical instruments to a full value they will only pay out £100 no matter how much insurance you pay for you can pay for it with a 50 quid supplement for up to a thousand pound insurance or whatever but if they damage it they will only give you £100 so always check it's something Royal Mail and Parcel Force should really look at um, because so many people send guitars and I happily send mine Parcel Force or Royal Mail uh, well I work for Royal Mail um, but not if they're not insuring them so I'm going to open this box on camera uh, this will act as evidence if there is any damage to the guitar um, and also it will give me well, it's a, a more interesting way to start the, uh, the project off this guitar has been sent up to me by a young guy called Dan from uh, Bristol he does have relatives who live up this way, so he says he can always pick it up when he's up this way. And uh, I know it wants to refret, and I know it's not in a great condition, this guitar, but he sent all the bits that he needs to upgrade on it. I think with scratch plates, pickups, and all sorts going on here. So it's likely going to be dismantled. Now, myself, if I was sending a guitar and I was having it built up, I'd have stripped it completely, took the neck off the whole lot, and boxed it in a smaller box. It would have been cheaper to do it that way. But anyway, let me just move the camera, and I'm not going to turn the camera off. I'm just going to move it. while I'm still filming and I'm not going to zoom out I'm going to keep it all in there so there you go I'm going to grab my Stanley knife I'm going to have a look inside the box so let's have a look here that's my wife whatsapping me I think my wife is a teacher and she's, uh, well, she's a trainee teacher this year, this one year. And uh, she, she'll probably be on her break right now. She's actually teaching, she teach, taught on her own solo for the first time yesterday. A wonderful girl, my Michelle. She got a first first on her chosen subject. French, which is French. My wife is French Canadian. So she learnt, well, she knows French French anyway, but not one of those. So she did that on her course. Fantastic grades, and she's now a trainee teacher. Don't know why I'm telling you all this information. Right, pickups here. Oh, we've got a full set of Texas Locos They're from Iron Gear. I love Iron Gear pickups. I have a Texas Loco on, on one of mine, but I only have a neck bridge and middle. I would have probably mixed this set up a little bit. Bridge, middle, neck, from right to left. I would have probably mixed mine up a little bit. I'd have gone with something a little bit more, a little bit different. But anyway, let's look at the guitar. Now the guitar looks to be absolutely tickety boo. Let's patch fairly well. Yes, it is in a bit of a state. It does need a clean. I knew that anyway. So it does need a refret. Is having a refret. I've got a nice letter from Dan in the box, which he did tell me about. So fortunately. Guitar is not damaged. I don't know what. Yeah, what what I asked for? Would that have been a tremolo arm in there or something? I've got no idea. We'll check that later. Check the box for other bits in a bit. Let me just stick this guitar on a stand out of the way. So now this video is acting as an intro to the guitar, and I'm going to read the note he sent with it in a moment. We're just going to get the box out of the way. Should something have been in there? Not anything in there now. So there will be a scratch plate in that pack there. So let's see what's what. Maybe I'm doing all the electrics and everything on this. Which would be great fun for me. I love modding Stratocasters. If you go back a couple of years in my videos, you'll see a Stratocaster, a Mexican Strat I modified. I put all gold hardware on it, gold fret wire, everything, and it ended up, it was an absolutely fabulous guitar. Looking back now, I wish I'd never got rid on it, but I think I'm going to go and buy another and do the same kind of mods. So anyway, here is the guitar. I 
I do have a neck brace somewhere here. There you go. So yeah, that's the guitar. I don't think it's sustained any damage in transit. Those frets have had it. See how much closer I can get without smashing the window with the body. I can get very close actually. Uh, those frets have had it. We're going to oil them out. There's no height on them at all. They're all paggered. They're all worn. Uh, nicely worn neck. Got some real good patina about it. Some nice locking Charla tuners in a satin finish. Nothing wrong there. Bridges. I don't like them bridges that much. Just something about them. But anyway, let's uh, let's move the camera back. Let's go back to where we were. That's nice. And we'll zoom in just a little. That's great. And we'll read the letter that Dan has sent. Now we have had a couple of discussions. He has relatives live probably two, three miles away from where I am in Huffweight, which is not far, it's A38. So hey Vic, number one, stumbled across the YouTube channel. You do great work, so it's exciting to send one of my guitars to you. Thank you very much, Dan. Really surprised to find you in Kirkby. I'm originally from Tibshelf near Huffweight. That's right, small world, yep. Here's my Mech Strat, blah, blah, blah. I bought it at St Mansfield Pond and Garden Centre in about 2002. Very interesting. Uh, I wanted to right very good very good this is my daily player for the next eight years wow 200 pound to pay for this uh, right that's had four or five fret levels so let's cross all that out so let's turn over okay onto the technical stuff new frets and nut not a problem new pickups and electrics shielding in body full setup good clean if you need anything just ask no rush can't wait to play this again as it's been years thanks daniel Sorry if a bit's missing, just buy new and charge as you go. Ah, there you go. It's been in a cardboard box for about 10 years. Wow, brilliant. So I've got complete rain over this. So all I have are the pickups and the pick guard. White pick guard. Ooh. I, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you have gone for a tortoiseshell pick guard? I would have absolutely gone for a tortoiseshell pick guard on there. I'd have these stickers off it and all. But uh, we'll see about that. So, wow, that's going to look different. Let's see if the holes line up. The holes almost line up. They don't all line up. So we're going to drill new holes. I will not be filling the old holes, there's no point. What is the point of that? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is an eight hole design, whereas we are probably drill from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get out of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. I've never seen a ten hole design. Well, there you go. Let's have a look at the uh, graphic on the headstock. Fender MN 815286, made in Mexico. There you go. Blah, 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 blah. Black string tree, black knot. We're going to put a bone knot on there, or a cre definitely a cream knot anyway. Uh, possibly go with a bone, or we'll go with a uh, Fender Cyclovac. Absolutely fine. We'll leave all that lacquer on there. We could take it off and oil it if uh, Daniel so wanted. Could leave all the patina and everything on there. Frets look to be round about 2.3 mil wide, which is vintage size, which is fantastic because I have vintage size fret wire in stock. Let's just get a caliper out and give it a measure. I like doing these mini live videos. It's not live as such because it's not going out live, but it is live in as much as you're seeing the guitar at the same time I do. So I am for all intents and purposes, live right now. Fantastic. Caliper's reading here. Uh, that's not very good at number. They're reading 143 millimeters. Okay, let's have a look, see where we are. I'm saying 2.3. It's actually 2.1 mil. 2.15. That is really good news. It's about 2.1 mil wide, which is fantastic because I'm gonna, um, I'm going to refret this using vintage fret wire. Uh, I do have some brand new fret wire in stock that I just ordered from uh, my supplier. Tone Tech Luthi Supplies, based somewhere in England. Let's just have a look in here. And this is my new stuff. And the good thing about the fret wire I'm using, Sinton's Elite, is, I just had a delivery of this, three lots. Sinton's Elite, 2.3 wide, but it's 1.4 millimeters high. And the great thing about that is that will give us more redresses down the years or down the line. But even better than that, 
Not only is it wide and high, it is the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet. Where most fret wire used by companies uh, is 12% nickel silver, a lot of luthiers and techs like myself have been using 18% nickel silver for the past number of years, as I always have. Uh, but this stuff is 25% nickel silver. It is not as hard as stainless. It's not quite as hard as gold, uh, Jeskar Gold Evo, but it is right up there. This will give you years and years more play because it hardly wears at all. And the good thing about the extra high at 1.4 mil is you'll get two, three, maybe even four redressers down the line. This should last you, even a heavy player should last you 50 years. Uh, that's just a guesstimation, but it'll certainly last a long, long time. So this being my um, wire of choice. And the good thing about it is it's, it's about 15 quid delivered for this stuff. It's no more expensive than regular 18%. So that's what I'm going with regarding a nut. I'm not gonna put any black hardware on there. Uh, I think I'm gonna change the string tree for a, for a chrome one. We're gonna put a cream nut on there. We're gonna give it a good clean. We're gonna rewire it completely. I will be going with CTS pickups. I'll talk to Daniel about what kind of mods he wants on the electrics. I'm thinking we'll put a blend pot on there, uh, which means we can blend in uh, the bridge pickup or the neck pickup in any of the positions you normally can't. So say for instance, we're in position five, which will just be the neck pickup with a blend pot on there. We can just blend the bridge in, you can have bridge and neck. But also uh, in position four, where we have got the neck and the middle, we can also then blend the bridge pickup in and have all three on. And vice versa, we can do the same at the other end. If we've got the bridge pickup, we can blend the neck in. If we've got bridge and middle, we can blend the neck in. Uh, but that will mean instead of having one volume and two tones and the bridge not on tone, we're going to make the middle tone or the middle knob, we'll make it a master tone for all three pickups. So a master volume, master tone and a blend pot. Um, great little mod there. I also put a, um, I think I put a treble bleed circuit on the volume so we don't lose, don't get any treble roll off um, on the bridge pickup. They're the mods I'm thinking I ought to do. I could also do a bass and treble cut rather than tone, but it won't give us a blend. I would like to have a blend on there. Uh, so I'm gonna talk that through with Daniel. This could be an expensive upgrade. I mean, refret wise, refret, I'm just putting the refretting prices up. You already start at 200 quid. That's your base price. You've got 25 quid because I would do extra work around a lacquered board. So that's 225. Got a price of a fret wire, price of a knot, which brings you up to 250. That's just for your refret. Uh, then you've got all the electrics to do. Uh, free, installing free pickups is 40 quid. Uh, the electrics I would charge you 25 quid for. That's another 65 on top of the 250. You're already at 315 quid. Then you've got your bits on top and your modification. So I'll be looking at so be looking in excess of 350 pounds all done for this. I hope it's worth it. I'm sure my work will be absolutely worth it because I stand by my work. My work is guaranteed. If you're not happy, I will sort it out um, without a problem. So uh, I pretty much know what I'll do. I would have liked to really seen a tortoiseshell pick guard on there rather than this one from guitaranatomy.com. I'll go check them out. I think I've been there once or twice before. But uh, anyway, so that's where we are. You've seen the guitar. You've heard my plans. Uh, the guitar, fortunately, is not, has not arrived damaged, so we're all pretty much good to go. I don't know when I'll be starting this. It's not up on the board yet, uh, but I will be doing this. This, I think, is going to be one of those December ones where I'm going to do this after my work at Royal Mail. So there's no immediate rush. I would like to think I'd get it done before Christmas, um, and I'm sure I will. So leave that with me. I'll be back, let you know my extended plans once I've talked to the owner, once I've talked to Daniel and uh, we'll crack on from there. Welcome back Fret Friends. I've decided what we are doing with this guitar. In a moment I'm gonna remove the neck and I'm gonna get the frets out. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this bridge. I do not like that bridge at all. I think we can get a better one than that. We're gonna go with a Wilkinson type affair. All the screws on this one have all had it. All they look, we're all stripped and we've had it. We may, may as well go and get a new bridge. I'll tell you for why. The owner of this said that the strings snap here, which means the metal itself is too short on the corners. Um, so rather than file it down and try and get it all working, we will go and get something, uh, probably a Wilkinson bridge, a new one to put on there. Um, I'm also going to strip, going to get the tuners off, get my neck off, going to get his frets out tonight. Uh, I am very fortunate in 
as uh, I have the day off tomorrow from Raw Mail because uh, it is my regular day off. We change every week. We go through the so like one week we'll have Monday off, then Tuesday, then Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's how it goes on a six week rotation. And I'm actually not needed at work tomorrow, which is fantastic. So I've got a whole day at this. So tomorrow, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get in here, get some solvents in there, I'm going to clean this all out. And I'm going to line the whole cavity with copper foil. And so I'm going to make a Faraday cage type affair in there. I'm going to do the same with the um, new pick guard. Uh, we're going to have a look inside there, see what the um, jack's like. If the jack's okay, we're going to leave that one in. Probably going to strip wire off there, use some new wire. Um, so a couple of things I can do. I can crack on with the refret or I can crack on with the electrics uh, and get the electrics. But I have all of the pots and electrics I need for the wiring job I'm going to do. We're going to have a blend pot, like I say, a master tone and a master volume. Um, I've already got the pots, I've got the wire, I've got the tape, I've got the uh, pick guard. So I'm going to get all this crap off, blah blah blah, strip the guitar, get all the bits off. We're going to talk to me and see what colour um, not in wants. I don't like a, white, a black one on there, I don't think it needs it. I think we're going to go with the cream one. We can go with bone or cycle back, makes no difference. I will be filming uh, intermittent parts of what I am doing. For instance, I'm going to heat the frets to get them out. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get everything prepped. Um, I think the light's good enough in here. Uh, I'm going to miss the light we've got. What else can I do? Uh, I'd love to be filming in the day, but daytime or daylight time is pretty short this time of the year. We are today 14th of December, year of our Lord 2020. So we uh, get dark by or three, four o'clock. Uh, we can't do anything about it. But anyway, that they are my plans. I'm going to buy a nice chrome bridge that fits straight in there. I'm going to go and have a look in a minute. And uh, we're going to get prepping for the work. Just done a little research. Before I mention what I found out, bits in a box. Every time I work on a guitar and I take bits off, I put the bits in a box. So we always know where the parts are. So anyway, strip the guitar, neck off, nothing in there. So I did a serial number check. Uh, made in Ensenada, Mexico in 1998 or 1999. Well, I know it's a 98, um, but no, no, sometimes you get some information here, but there is none. There is, oh, there's a little bit here. Can't quite read it. Some numbers on the end of the heel there. I've lost my magnifying glass thingy, my bob. Where it is, see if I can see anything. It's just some numbers. 90606 doesn't mean anything to me. So 1998 anyway, um, the heel reveals a lot more. Uh, look at this, February the 12th, 1998. So we know we're a 1998 Mexican Fender. Uh, not heavy at all, quite light, not super light, uh, slightly dense wood. Would this be popular or alder or something? No idea. But anyway, we're going to give this a right good clean. Don't know what I'm going to clean with. I've got some white spirit. That seems, tends to leave a bit of a residue. But I could also remove that residue with uh, some naphtha. Closest thing we have to naphtha over here is Zippo lighter fluid, which I have quite a few tins of it. I bought a lot of it a couple of years ago. So anyway, we're going to clean all that area off. Get it all free of grease and muck and dirt and umscar and what have you. Um, clean this area, well we're going to clean everything really, but get this all nice and clean inside and we're going to line it all with the uh, copper foil, insulating insulating foil, or should I paint it in there, I don't know, I've got some good insulating paint, I'm going to copper foil this, I'm going to do it properly, but anyway that's where I am right now, we do know it's a 1998, I'm going to text Dan and ask him what he wants to do with it, I am all for pulling that nut out, I'll remove the string tree, I'm going to put a chrome string tree on there, I'm thinking of putting a cream knot on there or a bone coloured knot on there. So uh, see what's what. I'm going to get things ready, start cleaning some things up and I'll come back and give an update in due time. Won't actually be soldering anything tonight but I do have the pots lined up and I have the uh, switch in there. It being a proper Fender approved um, Oak Grigsby five way switch. I hope it's five way. There it is, yeah, brilliant. So pots wise, what do we have? We have a CTS 
250k audio pot or logarithmic. We have a CTS 250k tone pot or linear. And we have a Bond no load linear pot 250k. By no load it means when it's fully on up to a 10 position it's actually not being used. Uh, it has got a detent, you can feel it, it locks into place. But when you turn it off the lock, that's it, it becomes a blend pot. And the idea of that is, I'll explain how that's going to work. So in position one, which we've got just the bridge pickup, but if we use this, we can blend in the neck pickup. That's a blend for the neck pickup. Also in position two, which is neck, uh, bridge and middle, we can again blend in the neck, giving us all three pickles. So we get these two options, or we get all three. In the middle position, it's just bridge, uh, middle, sorry. In position four, it is middle and neck, and you can then have the option of blending in the bridge, giving you all three again. And in position five, it's just the neck, and you have the option of blending in the bridge again. So you're only getting two extra options. You're getting the options of all three pickups on, or these two pickups, the bridge and the neck. But there's various ways you can do that. And you can uh, blend in more or less, so you can you know, alter the volume of whichever one you're blending in. Um, real great mod. Your tone is a master tone for all three pickups, and your volume is a master volume for all three pickups. Really simple mod. It is my favorite mod uh, on a Strat, and um, pretty simple to do. But that's all ready for getting the pickups in and getting the wiring in tomorrow. Pickups chosen are Iron Gear Texas Locos. Blah, 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 blah. The middle pickup is reverse wound for home cancelling. Well, it's reverse wired. But we have three of those. And they are Texas Locos. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm getting them in probably tomorrow. Thinking of pulling the frets out tonight. Uh, depends what time we are now. Are we going to have time? Yeah, it's 10 to 6. So I'm going to have time. I'm going to get them out tonight. Uh, maybe even get the pickups seated um, where they want to be tonight as well. Uh, also want to be cleaning all this area out, getting ready for lining with some copper tape so we can insulate everything. So that's it. You're up to date with that. Stay tuned. So just checking my um, copper insulating tape for continuity when it's stuck together in different pieces and um, some of it is even the sticky on there is conductive so it's going to create a connection but this actually doesn't so for me to get continuity out of my um, copper tape continuity lock full connection with four bits there but the other reason there's only continuity there is because I've soldered the bits together so I'm going to show you exactly what I mean I'm going to take another piece Copper tape. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep everything as it is right there. I'm gonna tape that. And if I just check that bit on its own, we're getting continuity there. But if I move to the next bit, nothing. What I'm going to do is solder that piece to that piece. So I'm going to show you. You're probably not going to see from where you are. Take my word for it. All I'm going to do is just run a little bit of solder between the two pieces. Tiny, tiny bit. So we need just to melt it over the two different pieces like I've done there. And now I've got a little bit of solder, just running that piece to that piece, and where we had continuity just on that one piece before, we've now got continuity along the whole length. And just to show the point, prove the point again, I'll take another piece of copper tape, stick it to this piece, We'll test that piece I've just put on. Fine. Join the other piece. Oh, it is working there. No, it's not. Kind of is. Not a proper connection though. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, I can do it here. Take a little bit of solder. Just join the two. So I'm going to have to do this on every piece of tape on the guitar. Now watch. So we have that continuity because each piece has solder. 
and all the little sort of screw pieces together. So when I put the tape on the inside cover to your big guitar, every single piece I've got I must solder to the next piece so we must have little dots all over everywhere so that's going to be fun doing that but I'm sure I'll get it so I just wanted to show that on camera so I am pulling the frets and they are really quite difficult to get out because there's not much height on them I'm going to use my older um, fret pulling plier this should get right in underneath because they're a nice flat Thin piece, but what we do is to get right in at the edge because we don't want to be scratching the lacquer or putting any index in the wood. But it is very difficult to get a grip on these because they're so low. So we're going to try and see what we can do. You're not going to be able to see, but that's it. We just got to nip it up like that, and then we can just come across this fret white. It's really soft. Look how it's bending up. Look. And there's nothing on those frets. He said there are four or five levels before. So, really difficult to get a grip. I don't get any purchase. I'm going to soldier on. That's it. I just got a nice pull there. So, I'm going to soldier on, get these out. But these do keep slipping. That's why I can't show you anything or you can't see anything because I'm going to get so much into them. No, I don't want to go. Try the other side. Yeah, we're working better from that side, I think. But you see how they're clearly not what I'm bending. Really, really soft red wire that. But anyway, we'll soldier on. These are the most difficult frets I've ever had to take out on any guitar ever. Maybe heating them would be a little bit better. But anyway, I'm going to soldier on. I'm going to get them out. We're not damaging the fingerboard, uh, which is good. Then again, if we did put a dint or two in there, it wouldn't make any difference. We're keeping this relic mojo look. Anyway, but I'm going to soldier on. I'm going to get these out. It's going to take me a while. Back later. And we have them out. And that took me about 10 minutes. And there's the frets, and they all bent quite easily. Really soft fret wire, nothing left on those horrible, horrible frets. We're going in with a much, much harder fret wire. And we are going to need to clean up the board and resort these slots. Cleaning it up is not a problem. Just going to get some white spirit on there. <coughs> Is it all going to come off? No, it's not. It's, it's just a discoloration over a matter of years. But this is still going to clean it all out. So the finger board is in pretty good shape. The varnish is still on there. I'm not going to sand it, even though there's a bit of varnish sticking up. We'll get the new frets in regardless. A little chip there, I found the piece, it's over there. I'm going to glue that back in just on that little corner. Yeah, that's going to be pretty simple to sort out. Also, I do have a fretting saw, fret slotting saw. Uh, it's in a half a mil curve with special blades. It's not a normal blade, which is about 0.56 millimeters. But it's exactly half a millimeter. And it's just a matter of that just making sure they're clear and they are if there's any old glue in there make sure that's out and it's got a depth stop so you can't go too far and there you go really is that difficult not at all so I'll crack on get that done once that's done even though we've got these black lines down here, they're not coming out. 
Um, so we are going to refret this as is. Fret wire I've chosen for this particular job is um, vintage, sort of a vintage, it's between a vintage and a modern size, it's two and a half mil. Let's see if I can find some, 2.3. I'll have some somewhere. There you go, this is called Benzia. Sintom's Elite, it's 25% nickel silver, the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet. I was using, this would be 12% nickel silver. I've been using 18% and this is 25%. Fantastic stuff. Let's check the size of it compared to the old stuff. It's a little bit wider, but this is gonna look fantastic. I don't wanna to go too wide on this. Really, really hard fret wire. And that's gonna work really, really well. It is pre-radius to about eight inch, so we don't need to radius it anymore. Don't need to do anything, we just need to cut it to size. And that'll be a job for me tomorrow. Earlier this morning, I cut the frets to size. Um, we have them all numbered sequentially. And this is fret two, and I'm just checking some areas here. We've got a couple of chips here, which I'm gonna to have to fill in. But we're gonna see how much the fret would cover them. Okay, we're still about a millimetre protruding from the edge there. Frets are cut just wider than they need to be, by the way, every single one. I can see we're sticking out a bit there. And there's also this chip here where I did save the bit. Uh, in the meantime, lost it, I forgot all about it, and I went and brushed my other bench. So that's gone. So I'm going to fill this area here. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is, sometimes I could go with just glue, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to fill in with some wood dust. So we're going to take some, uh, I have some silicon here, half a mil wide silicon, which I've cut into slight curves. I use this. The great thing about using silicon is it doesn't take glue. Glue doesn't stick to it. So all we need to do basically is stick silicon in the slot. Hopefully it should fit. It's half a mil wide so it should fit perfectly. I'm just going to get in position. I'm going to try and fill that slot with Maybe I've got a bent piece here. That's not going in for some reason. Normally it does. Let's go with a bigger piece. And this stops us getting glue, filling the slot with glue. We don't want to do that. These are really, really tight slots. Maybe, they shouldn't be, but I wonder if this was pressed from the side originally. Shouldn't be. It's only pre-1980-ish ones from the side. The ones afterwards are normally okay. Right, there you go. So we've got the silicon in there, and that means we can work in this area without glue getting into the slot. And I'm also going to have to do the same at this end. This is going to be a little bit more difficult, but we'll get there, we'll be absolutely fine. <clears throat> Again, we just need to get in. There you go. Yeah, it does slide in, so this possibly was fretted from the side. I don't see any reason why it would be on a Mexican. But there you go. So we've got both areas I need to work with. And all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to grab some, I do have some wood dust from the eye. Like a box of tricks here, or it's a bag of tricks. And in here I should have some um, dust, wood dust, but it is not. I've got some light stuff. Got all sorts of nearby card, rosewood, the lot. And this is most definitely wood dust in there, and that's going to work a treat. Super glue darkens anything it touches, so this will should darken up to match the fingerboard. I'm just going to put a little bit in there. I'm going to grab and get in the way of the camera, unfortunately. I need to grab. Ends of a super glue. Or a tip, or a whatever these things are called. I've just tipped a load out. I may just go with a precision one because I do let a stupid amount of glue out some of these. I'm going to use a proper one. I'll be using the uh, thinnest CA glue, super glue. Which anyone that knows me knows that I hate. Super glue, glue, passion. 
it sticks me superbly, but not the stuff I'm sticking. Not always. So, get that out of the way, get that out of the way. So here's my super glue. I'll stick that on the end. I'm going to have a go at this one. I do have a screwdriver I use for this job. Nice splattered screwdriver. And this really is bar this area up here. That is the only area I need to fix on the whole neck. The frets were really, really difficult to get out. We slightly gorged the fingerboard in areas at the edge. We're not worried about that, it does happen and it's fine. It's not going to affect playability at all. So what we're going to do with this is... I'm going to try not to overfill this because I can't really... I don't want to be sanding fingerboard so I'm going to get some really really close to where it needs to be I am going to have to sand it ever so slightly but all I'm going to do with this is just drop some glue in there That is it. If I grab some paper. So all the excess, all we need to do is just tamp this down. And that is it. And those slots are filled. And they have gone a little bit darker. Well, at least we're going to know they're there. But that doesn't matter. And I don't need to sand this because we've smoothed it over. If we just fold silicone back, glue doesn't stick to it, so it comes straight out. And we have those holes filled. It may not look fantastic, but we don't have any holes in there. And this neck is banged up. It is a little bit tatty, but this plain surface is going to be absolutely fine. Don't forget the plain surface is actually the frets, not the fingerboard. So that's that one done. That's going to be absolutely fine. Once the frets are in, you're hardly going to see any of that. All I'm going to do is make sure that that fret slot is clear. I can actually do it now on camera. Again, this saw is a half mil wide blade. It's got a depth slot on there, or a depth gauge. Should take the fret perfectly, not a problem. We'll move on to this one, same scenario. Some dust, drop some close by, and all we're going to do is we're just going to feed the dust in there. Tap it down best we can, nice and level. I'm just going to put a drop of CA glue in there. Not right on it because it might blow the dust away. And that's it. And that. Looks great. Tamp it down. If you want, you could just put a little bit of extra dust on there, drop it close by, just to soak up any of the excess glue if you're not getting it on there. And that's perfect. And we have filled that slot as well. The 
and you would never know. Let me just show that Come a little bit closer to the camera. And there you go. We have filled that big chunk. It's now gone. Remove silicon. And look at that. That's that area filled. Beautiful. On this video I've decided because it is near Christmas and I don't have a lot of spare time and this is my only day off now until after Christmas from work I'm skipping through a few things uh, quicker than I normally would. Not that I'm working quicker, I'm just not filming as much and I'm pressing the press in using my Arbor Press or an adjusted Arbor Press for pressing in frets and I've got five left to do. I'm just going to show how I do it. And basically with these cut to just a little bit wider than we need to do, we just tap the two edges in. Gently. I'm just going to show these two and we bring the whole unit over to the press. We line it up and we just press the frets in like so. That's about as complicated as it gets. We want a good level press there. It could come across just a little bit. But there you go. I've not used glue. I don't glue frets in anyway, but I use glue as a gap filler. But these, the slots are that tight, but because the frets that came out are slightly narrower tank, so the, the slots are that tight, I decided not to use glue. And they are pressing in really, really well. And they're not going to move. And these are the last three. I'm going to get these in. And once that's done, I'm going to let the guitar sit for a while. Might move on to something else, probably do the electrics. And uh, we can crack on with this a little bit later. So there you go. We're going to press them in. I'll come back later and show you how we go on with the rest of the job. Moving on with the frets in and we're ready to edge and bevel these frets. We're going to move on to something else. And we need to build a Faraday cage inside here. That means we need to insulate everything. And I've never done this before, but I've been watching some videos on how to do it. And um, decided that I'm going to, well I've not decided anything, it's a way to do it. I'm going to want to have an overlap of about two or three millimetres so we can create a contact point uh, of the, um, when the scratch plate's on, we need the scratch plate to make contact with the Faraday cage we're building here. This needs to be a continuous piece of uh, shielding and in this area we need to join them two together with so when we we've got continuity all the way through and because this doesn't have shielding glue on the edges we're going to have to put a solder joint on every single piece but anyway i've been and seen how to do this online and what we're going to do is we are going to just overlap a couple of millimeters don't want to go too far but we do want to make sure we have that overlap just there. And I'm, it's a trial and error, I'm learning as I go along with this. And I don't want to, um, having creases is not going to be a problem. I don't want to lose spaces anyway. So this is how we're going to go on. And like I said, what I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to put a solder joint on every single piece. So when I put overlap just here, I'm going to place a little bit of solder on the join. So we get continuous connection. And it's not, it doesn't have to be spot on. But I like to keep it relatively tidy, so I'm just going to try and cut the same length again. And this may be shorter, I don't know. This isn't going to be a bit shorter, but that's okay. I'm going to try and curl this piece round. So I can trim this at the top as well if I need to. So 
so long as I cover where I need to cover. So like here for instance, I want to get into that corner and that works. And then when I get around here, I will just snip and fold over. And we've still got that connection there and that works absolutely fine. So you see where I'm going with this. But I'm going to soldier on. Might be an idea to have a soldering iron on now. And I can drop little bobs of solder on the areas I need to as I go around. And that means we're going to get that proper connection everywhere. Maybe going a little bit longer this one, but it's okay. Piece, but that's okay but you see where we're going with this and how we're doing and again mm -hmm. that was not too boring for you guys I'll leave the tape on just a little while. This, like this area, for instance, I will. This is what we'll do. Do it this way. that so we'll just pull some back but you see how it's going at the corner of that so I'm going to turn the camera off I'm going to crack on with this I'm going to start dropping little blobs of solder in there but you see where we're going with this and how it's, how it's working now you can get a conductive tape with a conductive backing or conductive glue on there and then you don't have to put the little solder joints on everywhere like I'm going to have to do but you see where we're going with that you know, I'm going to create this little lip all the way around, making sure that the scratch plate is going to cover everything. I'm going to crack on and get that done. It'll be easy around these areas because um, I'm not going to have to go so deep and be so awkward in what I'm doing. But I'm going to carry on with that. I'm going to blow some solder in there just to show where we're at. I should be able to do it there. And all I'm going to need is a small blob of solder. Just so it creates a continuous connection everywhere, and that is so easy. That one's done. Yeah, it's going to be really, really easy to make this right. So, not going to be a problem at all. It's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, it's going to be really easy. So I just need to take the time and get this done. Like I say, I don't have to film everything. Put a few blobs of solder on there. And I can go and grab my altimeter. with me 
second or some seconds. And I can be checking for continuity everywhere. Checking the first piece and the last piece to see if we've got continuity. Should have, because I've just soldered it, I believe, in the correct places. And we have complete continuity everywhere. That's at that end to this end. So that is not difficult at all. So I'm going to crack on, get that all done. And I will come back and show you the results in a while. Here we are, some time later, and I have insulated the hole of the cavity and the jack cavity here and what we need is continuity and if we've got continuity we'll get a beep that means we're making an electrical connection so we're just going to test it in all areas so everywhere we have an electrical connection oh not there yes we do don't know why I'm there, I must have had it just not touching right. Anyway, there we go. There, and even in there, look. What we did is we soldered a wire through the loop, through the hole here, through the hole this side. Uh, we we uh, soldered that on, and we also we taped it up. We'll tape back over it, just so we've got that connection. So we have an electrical connection everywhere. So we have a perfect Faraday cage built. Um, everything is going to be covered like so uh, the uh, pick on will cover all of that but I'm not checking it and I don't need to because I know it will but we will just for argument's sake we will check it anyway so I'm just going to get the pickle wires out of the way and we have everything covered everything insulated because this on the edge here will make a connection with the foil underneath or oh, maybe it won't there hang on a minute hang on a minute if we have to we'll put a wire on there just let's have a look yes we will we'll make a connection under the pickup should be absolutely fine so let's just see where we're going to be with that with that with that get the pickup cables out of the way like so and we should be able to let's just get this Try and get this all out of the way in the guitar. Yeah, and our connection is going to be made in these areas. Definitely some area. Uh, but what I will do is I will. Oh, we're going to make a connection there anyway. So that's it. Absolutely fine. So we have a fully insulated area. We have a Faraday cage made. Just making sure that nothing is going to stick out the sides. Doesn't look like it. If that does, I'll peel it back. It should be okay where it is. Now let's just have a look. I'll try and. Oh, that's looking pretty good. If that's where that goes, I think it is. Yep, we are absolutely fine. So, job well done. That is ready. I can do the electrics anytime now. Just waiting for the knobs to turn up. The control pots. But yeah, that's all done. That's all ready for wiring. I need to go back to, uh, to the uh, neck and we can move on with the next part of the Frex. Today is the first time I've used my new cutters by Stumac. Uh, these were really, really inexpensive and they're fantastic cutters. Better than the GMI ones I've been using for six or seven years. The GMI ones are good, but these just cut. And this is, don't forget, this is the hardest nickel silver fret wire I've ever used. And this is cutting through and white butter. So we're just nipping these ends as close as we can get, ready to do the bevels. And again. The more of this I cut off, the less filing I have to do later. And don't forget, we are going to do a bevel so we can go slightly at an angle. We've got to remove, like I say, we've got to remove less material later. The frets are in really quite well. Uh, 
not totally even but quite even I'm going to knock just have to knock a couple more in just give them a test before I go leveling anything so I'm going to go across the fingerboard with fret rocker again mark up a couple that are a little bit high in places and we're going to just knock them in with the uh, fretting hammer but there you go that is all the edges brought right back to the well, the edge of my neck or as close as I can get it because it'll make it a lot easier for me to file these edges than get the bevels done so uh, really good progress on this so far to say I've only been at it well today really did a bit of work last night but most of the work's been done today uh, and we are I've not had a break for lunch yet we are 2 30 in the afternoon so we're doing okay next part of the job you've got to trust yourself well, especially the way I do it is because we're going to do the bevels and I removed all the tape from the guitar, which in hindsight I didn't need anyway. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to do the edging. So we're going to get these frets right close to the neck. And the beveling on this quite a coarse file, but it is a perfectly level and flat file. And I'm going to trust my judgement. When I stop getting that noise, I know I'm close enough. And then I can come with a finer file. But I'm just going to go across to it all by hand. And the reason I do a bevel by hand now is I don't like using the 35 degree file. I like to do it by hand and like to have a less or more shallow bevel to give us more fret. So we really take the time with this. So I don't want to be cut into the lacquer. And the file will let you know by the sound when you're close to where you need to be. And when I get pretty close, close now to the edge I will go with a different file and for this I go with my Swiss made Balorb number four cup file smooth and sharp and I do have a particularly precision flat side which is this side by chance more than anything I didn't buy it as a flat file but you see with it level we're not cutting into the frets anymore so we know we're up to the edge Stop the finger going over the edge there, like so. And then I've got to check the bevel by eye, and that's not too bad. So I'm going to crack on, get this done. And I'm going to swim, flip it over, do the other side as well. I've got it all by hand. And once I'm quite happy that uh, I'm quite happy where the frets are. And with a bevel angle on both sides, and once we've got there, we can go and get these frets leveled. But that, is, that side is pretty close to where I need it to be. I did it all by hand, we've not cut into the lacquer on the guitar, there's nothing sharp there. You do feel a bit on these bevels anyway, but we're going to round those bevels off later with a beveling file. But that, so that edge is beautiful. So, always with jobs like this, take your time. So anyway, I'm going to crack on, do a little bit more, smooth them off. So you get the idea. Anyway, I'm going to crack on, get the other side done. I'll come back in a while. You catch me wearing my first ever Christmas jumper. In fact, it has Crimbo written pond stit. So it's not a Christmas jumper, it's a Crimbo jumper. And I hope you like it. Merry Christmas. But moving on, I have done the bevels on the neck and now I need to prepare this neck for fret leveling. And uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter the truss rod until the neck is dead straight. It more or less is dead straight. As far as I know, and if that is the case, there's a tiny, tiny bit of relief in it, which is fantastic news. 
because that means we can just turn the truss on just a little, get rid of that relief. If anything, I'd have thought we might have a little bit of backbow in it because I thought the tangs were wider than the old ones, but they're not. But they, they are the frets. They are in, they are beveled. Uh, they will need leveling and recrowning, only a little bit of leveling. But to do that, what I need to do is get the neck dead straight. Once it's dead straight, I can tape the whole neck up. Well, I'm going to tape the edges of the neck and I'm going to tape the fingerboard, just leaving the frets exposed. Once I know that it is dead straight, uh, and we've got it taped up, we can then go and level the frets and recrown them and polish them. So quite a lot of work still to be done, but I think today, I'm going to call it a day today. I've done this, I've got the refret done, I've got all the electrics in the guitar ready to solder up. Um, I have, um, well you know what I've done, I've also um, lined the guitar with the conductive tape, copper tape. Uh, so we have a, everything's all circuited up, there are no gaps in anything, so we've got a Faraday cage in there ready to wire all the electrics in so that's all working absolutely fine i would have liked to go a little bit more done but i'm quite tired you know working for royal mail this time of the year it's hard work and i've got wednesday wednesdays and thursdays are the worst days tomorrow's going to be pretty uh, bad for parcels tomorrow so i've got a long day ahead tomorrow um like i said with this one i don't know if i'm going to get it done before christmas i'm not going to rush it uh, i've already talked to the owner he says no don't rush it so take time there's no rush for it so uh that's it i'm going to call it a day for now and um, I'll come back and give you an update later. Enjoy the jumper. I have a few minutes spare before I go to work so what I intend to do or what I intended to do was that I was going to set the neck dead straight, I'm going to go across with fret rocker and mark the frets that are high and I was going to level the frets using my Crimson Guitars for levelling beam with 400 grit on one side, 240 grit on the other. This is emery cloth, by the way, really, really good stuff, lasts a really long time. But anyway, I can't do it now because the neck, even with the truss rod really loose, still has a little bit of relief in it. So the only way I'm going to get this straight to work on it is I'm going to have to put it on my neck jig. So I'm unable to do that right now, and I do have about five minutes before I go to work anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to set this up later, which is a bit of a shame, but it's only five minutes. 10 minutes or whatever. So later on, I'm going to be getting this. I'm going to bolt this to the piece of MDF I normally use. I'm going to get it on my neck jig. We're going to force the neck straight uh, by supporting it and clamping it. And once it's straight, we're going to come across with fret rocker, check the frets. Uh, we're going to level the whole lot anyway using this leveling beam. Um, but I thought I might as well just explain it and why I can't always do it um, just by hand off the guitar. And that's because even with the truss rod really loose, 3 16 Allen wrench here. Truss rod slackened all the way off. I don't think it's a two way truss rod, though it does feel like one sometimes. It's not a two way. I did have put two ways on there, let's just have a look. And I do still have a tiny bit of relief underneath. So, saying that. Yeah, I still have relief under there. It is not straight enough, so you don't get two-way truss rods on fenders. Unless you do, let me just try this. I think it's just a tight knot. That is not so, because if I was, if I was putting it back row in there, I'd know about it. No, there's still a tiny bit of relief in there, so we are going to have to get it clamped up. So I will do that when I come back off shift later. And, uh, we're at, but the next part of the process will be to get these frets level and recrowned. Shouldn't take a lot of work. There are only a couple of high ones here and there. They've actually gone in really quite well to say they're not glued in. Uh, but yeah, back later. So prep friends, I've decided to put the neck on the jig. And to do so, we have to bolt it to a piece of wood. And I use a piece of 30mm MDF. Always have done. It's a great tool, this uh, piece of MDF. It's got pre hole drills, or pre drilled holes, should I say. And uh, we've got the neck on there. And what we do is first we set the jig straight. So, what I'll do is I'll get the jig, get it clamped on the bench. Once it's clamped, I'll adjust the uh, reversible feet, which become a platform holder. Tap everything down, and we'll just get a spirit level, and we'll just check that everything's level. It doesn't matter what the bench angle is at, if it's tilted one way or another, as long as we get it straight for me to work on. We're straight that way, we're straight that way, or straight enough, and there you go, I'm happy with that. And I could have just straightened the neck with the truss rod, and I, I, I actually have done just about, 
But what I want to do is, I want to have a truss rod a little bit loose and I want to force it to straightness. So we're going to get as straight as we can with the truss rod, then I'm going to support it underneath so nothing slips. That way, when we're level with frets, we know the perfect level. To get this neck dead straight, I need about a quarter turn on the truss rod from slack. Uh, just nip it up and just give it about a quarter of a turn, but this is going to work even better. So we're going to get the straps out. You'll see I've started raising the jig on a platform right here. And that way I can, I've got plenty of room to work with the straps. Plus I've got plenty of room for these. It's all gonna work really, really well. Not worried about that yet, but yeah, we're just gonna get it all strapped in. So, may need two straps. Uh, let's get them on. Good thing about using this as the body, we don't have to put any protectors on the body. Because it's just a piece of wood. So all we're gonna do is bring it up. Once we get so tight, we're just going to straighten everything up. We're not going to nip anything up yet, we're just going to get everything lined up first. Make sure we're central. And we are pretty central there, looks pretty good. Let's have a look there. Yep, yeah, happy with that. It one more time there. That is going to be enough, but just for argument's sake, I'm going to stick the other strap on there just so we don't get any movement whatsoever. And what have I done with it? That's a very good question. I'm sure I've got that. Now it's in here. Same again underneath. takes a little bit longer but we don't have to use the precision we don't we haven't got the dials in we don't have to be precision with this we just have to get it straight by eye I know what I'm doing and that's it we now have the body or the substitute body secured we have the neck more or less straight I'm just going to loosen these again I love this jig. I put some extra steel inserts in there. I've actually got four just right under the neck. It's normally set for three and one at the end there. I've actually drilled extra holes to get more in, just to give us more stability. So what we need to do now is we need to set the neck dead straight because this is where we're going to be doing the fret leveling. 25 inch scale length. We are a little bit, we've got a little bit of relief in there, so we're going to take the 316th Allen wrench. And I'm just going to give a very small turn. So we are there, we're just going to give it a, oh we're actually slack there. We'll just take up the slack. That's it, that's just, that's just nipping, that's on there, that's the tiniest bit. And that neck is, we've still got a tiny, tiny bit of relief in there. So we're just going to go a little bit more, maybe a 32 of a turn. And that to me looks pretty much spot on. So we just slightly nipped on the thread there. I'm going to see where we are. That is looking really good. Still inserts, just bring them up to the neck. Just, this is all for support. We have that neck dead straight. This one is a little bit, just not quite touching there. There you go, we're fully supported underneath, 
we've got the neck dead straight and where we are right there we can level now what I can also do is bring this up right underneath just again just for support and if I want a little bit extra I do have an eye bolt just bear with me a second Oh, that's not pushing the rod, oh, that's not high enough. I've got the short one in there, should have the long one in there. But I'm going to leave that one off. That's actually going to be good enough. We can work with that, I should have changed that one over. But that's absolutely fine, we are level. I can level the frets like so. So I'm going to go across with fret locker when I grab one. And just check where we're high, I will get a permanent marker. And I'm just going to mark where we're high. Don't forget these are freshly installed frets. Can actually fit with the guitar. We're not going to age them or anything. We're going to leave the dark lines from the old scar of the old frets. We've never got that clean anyway. But at least it's going to look apart. So what I'm doing is I'm marking where we're rocking. It just means I need to concentrate my efforts a little bit more in those areas. We are levelling the whole lot as a unit. But this really is not that bad to say it's just freshly refretted. Normally frets are all over the place. People think if you put frets in and press them in evenly, we don't need levelling. Absolute hogwash. You always need to do a level after installing new frets. But I guarantee we're not all going to go in straight, no matter how much you press them and how firm they are and how well you press them in. Like I said, I'm just marking the areas that need the most work. I will hit this with a nine and a half inch radius block with sandpaper on it once I've leveled the fret. Uh, people think you need to use a radius block to get the radius, you don't. If you use just a leveling beam, a flat leveling beam, you, you'll follow a radius. Just want to make sure you're not cutting into the first and last fret too much. This one and this one because they're going to be a guideline, so make sure they're installed correctly. They normally are anyway. <clears throat> I do apologise for the engine outside, someone's just decided to strike their 4x4 up and then let it tick over, probably blow the windows clean. We have had snow the last couple of days. We are today, we are the 30th of December, year of our Lord 2020. I'm back at Royal Mail, been back since the 28th, no 29th, sorry. This was yesterday, the 30th today. Been quite a bit of work at this end, so we've not, even though I've pressed them in properly, it's still not level. But there you go. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 frets with high spots. We're just going to level the lot. I don't really want to hit these two too much, so I'm going to keep from hitting these and hitting these two ends. It's good because we've got two blank at the end, two blank at the end, and they are level. So we're going to make the level in between that. So I'm just going to check again how straight the neck is. Once I'm happy with how straight the neck is. And I'm not, we still have a little tiny bit of relief in there. I'm going to give it the smallest turn with an iron wrench. I'm going to re-support underneath. That's how much I've gone, about 1 64th of a turn there. And that neck is as straight as I'm going to get it. Okay, I'm happy with that. That will give me a good level surface. So, how are we going to level? I already have a pre-prepared 
leveling beam. I've got a brand new leveling beam actually. I bought one from Crimson Guitars because mine had become a little bit unstable and I've had it fixed a couple of times and it just kept, kept coming back worse and worse. So, Crimson Guitars leveling beam. I think it's cost me about 35 quid. I have 400 grit on this side, 240 on this side. This is emery board, emery cloth, sorry, not emery paper, which lasts a lot longer. It is. It comes on a roll, so it's much easier to affix. And all I'm going to do is with a 240, we're just going to level with frets. And I ain't going to stand on ceremony, I'm just going to crack on and get it done. You'll notice I'm following the radius from here, so when I get to this side, I'm going to be overlapping. Otherwise, that would be like using a uh, compound radius. To follow the radius properly, when you get to the edges, you keep this straight. So once you get to the edge of there, you're going to be overlapping this end. And that's the way to always do it. So when you're doing a compound radius, do you follow the lines of the strings like this? But when you're doing a normal radius, you just follow a radius. Couldn't take me too long. 240 grit paper. It will work quickly. check again we've got moved a lot of material at this end like we needed to I didn't log which frets were at eye spots still high there if we're still high there and there we're not doing enough work yet so we're just gonna we'll probably do a fair old bit at this end so again we can clean the leveling beam if we want to every now and again this emery cloth will last a long time. So make sure we're doing 240 grit down, which we are. And just keep going. removed at this end, we'll just brush all that off. Doesn't take too long. Clean the emery. And just keep checking your work. I'll level at that end, which is great news. A little bit of work to do on this edge. Just going to go and close the workshop door because my wife just walked in and she'll probably talk. There you go. So still more work, work to do down this end here. So we're going to go again, 240 grit. They're still mocking about with their jeep across the road. can hear it, I apologise for that, nothing I can do about it though. I have to be careful with the neighbours because I've just bought a new car and uh, it's quite an expensive one and I don't want people hitting it and the bloke next door, the new bloke next door, I've already seen him hit two walls reversing out of his driveway and I've just bought a Jag so don't want that hitting. But anyway, that one's still a bit high. So you see what I'm doing? Sanding and checking, sanding and checking. Not pressing down, not really great weight anyway. Letting the sanding beam or the leveling beam do the work. You'll feel it become easier. Bean again, but the best way to keep doing this and to be sure is to keep marking it up with black pen and going over again. I think we're pretty much there now. I 
Don't be too scared of removing too much material. You're not removing a lot of material, you're just leveling frets. You're only removing main material from the ones that are high. You can see the ones that are, you'll, you'll check your first two and your last two. You shouldn't have much material removed. That is saying a level to me. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go across with black pen again. When I'm going to go across with a 240, I'm going to go across with the 400. I must remember where I keep putting things. What can I do? I'm hiding under there, look. And what we're looking for now is all of it to be removed in just a few strokes of the 400. We're using the 400 also because it will remove the main scratches we're putting. With 240, it'll make them easy to polish down the line. So I'm going to be now using the 400 grit side, clean that up. And all being well, we should just go in a few strokes. A little bit just there, so I'm going to have a high breath somewhere this way. And that is all of the pen removed. That means that the frets are level. So we're gonna go across with the fret rocker again, just to check everything. And if we are level, we are ready for recrowning. I am gonna pen these up, and go across with a nine and a half inch radius beam. Some paper already on it. I do believe I've got one with some 400 grit already on it. To make sure we've maintained the radius down the whole length of the neck. But that's feeling good to me. The leveling is the easiest part of that work. I can feel some slightly sharp ends at these edges, but we are going to roll those over with sandpaper anyway in time. There we go. I've not done the beveled edges yet either. I've done the bevels, but I've not rounded the, rounded the edges of the bevels off just yet. That's another job for later. So a couple of things I've got to do once this is level, which it is. I'm going to go across with a non-permanent marker this time. We just need to make sure that we maintain the radius along the whole length of the neck. The reason I like to work permanent marker is, unlike this stuff, it doesn't wipe off, so you've got to actually sand it off. Whereas this will wipe off, but the thing is, I've already got the, um, I've got these frets level. So, tops, we'll call it in with a blue marker. And look in the box. See if we've got the nine and a half radius. Yes, we have right there. With some old 400 grit on there. And we're just gonna straight up. And that is all of the pen removed. So we've maintained that radius down the whole length of the neck. Just to make sure we're just gonna go in one direction. And that's the radius maintained. All of the pen came off in a couple of strokes. So that's fantastic. So we have the frets level, the radius is right, and we're ready to move on to the next part of the process, which will be crowning the frets. I'll explain more about that when I've got everything ready to do so. I think I'm gonna tape these up while it's on the jig. Um, I'm gonna clean this up first. I'm gonna get some naphtha on there, just give it a wipe over. Get any grease off there and then I can tape this up. I need to tape between the frets to work on them properly. 
So when I've done that, I'll come back and uh, I'll teach you all about crowning frets. So crowning frets, that's about as close as I can get in with the camera on the bench I'm using. I had to move over to another bench because it was easier to work. And um, crowning, what we're looking at is where we've levelled the frets, can't even see, where we've levelled the frets that way, going this way, we've got that flat spot on there, we need to rebuild that crown going this way. And uh, I'm going to be using my Streamac Z file. Good thing about this, short cut one side along the other, flip it 180 degrees, long cut short. And this will cut each edge of the fret until we've got a nice thin line down the centre, rebuilding the crown for us. But it will not cut a uniform arc, so we're going to finish that off with a um, proper crowning file. Now, where have I put that in this? So I'll be finishing off with this one, which is a perfect crown on there. But this will get us close. Great file. What's great about this, having a short then long then a long then shortcut is it will not touch the top of the frets so we will not lower the frets in any way at all so I'm just going to show hopefully you can see but it's just matter of gliding across removing more from one side than the other different angles flipping it 180 degrees same again and that leaves us a really thin line down the centre means we've not touched the top and that one's done and I'll show you again Exactly the same on this one. Long cut one side, short the other. Flip it 180. Same again. Nice thin black line down the centre. Clean the file. And just, even though I've not done any of the, I've not actually reprofiled any of them yet, I'm going to do them all together. We'll come with a profiling file and we'll do these beveled edges each side. Beveled edge, beveled edge, then just reshape. Again, this will not touch the top, but that's going to remove any inconsistencies left by other file. We're going to get that perfect crown, and that one's done. Same again, always clean the file first. This one. This one. That's these two finished. And they are beautiful. So that's those two done. Got these two to finish with the Z file. Once that's done, I can go across all of them with this file. These are all done, these are all been Z filed, but we've not been profile filed yet. So it's not going to take me too long to get these done. Once they're done, I can bring you back in. We're going to round off these beveled edges, then we're going to move on to the polishing stage. With the frets now recrowned, one thing left to do before I get to the polishing stage, and that is to round off these little uh, beveled edges. And I've started at this end, but maybe I should have started at the end closer to the camera because you're going to see more. So I'm going to take my Stumac file, has two safe edges, safe edge on the bottom, safe edge on the top. We have two cutting edges there. It's a fine file, it's for doing uh, beveled edges, and I'm going to use the underside on the guitar because this is a curved or a rounded overside and that way we're not going to dig into the paper and all we're going to do is these beveled edges we're just going to roll them round and just take away those birds so it's just a matter of rolling them over like so just rolling over and coming over the top and it's just taking away any sharpness we've got on the edges of these frets and I'll show you on the next one again just roll over just roll over and over the top. I'm going to be sanding over these before I start polishing anyway. But this is just going to take away any of that sharpness, any of those uh, sharp edges we've got on there. And it's not going to take me long because I'm used to doing this. And like I say, we are going to roll some sandpaper over these again later. I'll probably get some 600 grit. And we're going to round over that way. We're just going to get some sandpaper and we're just going to sand down on both sides, going both sides, it's going to round them over even more, but it's going to take any sharpness away with this file. And when you actually run your hands up and down and play the guitar, these fret edges are going to be nice and smooth. Like I say, this isn't going to take too long, but it's the last thing I'm doing today, I'm not polishing frets, we are, what day are we? 
Thursday the 31st of December, year of our Lord 2020, and what a year it has been. And um, no end in sight to this uh, Covid by the looks of it. Uh, we've just been put on tier 4 where I am in North Nottingham, so uh, I've actually been furloughed again, which is fantastic for getting guitars done, but you know, I can't complain about it. I'm not working for all mail while I'm furloughed, am I? Which is great. But there's no end in sight of this Covid virus right now, is there? So uh, what can I say about that? I will hopefully be doing a year in review video. Maybe I'll do that 1st of January tomorrow. New Year's Day, New Year, let's hope for better things in 2021 when we've had. Anyway, back to this. Like I say, because I've experienced this doesn't take me too long at all. I'm just removing these sharp edges. Make it easier to sand them later. I've already done the side closest to me. I've turned the guitar around 180 degrees so I can get at the other side of the frets. And they are done. And they are really nice and smooth. I'll show you what I mean by rolling over the edges with some um, sandpaper. Have we got any 400 over here? I don't think I have. I'll take an old piece of whatever grit this is and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're just going to basically take some sandpaper and we're going to roll over the edges of the frets and this is going to really smooth them off. Right so I'll be using a coarser sandpaper from this. I'll probably go with some 400 grit, maybe some 400, maybe some 600 or maybe some 400 and some 600 and then we're going to get to polishing the frets but these will just round them over even more give us a nice polish. They already feel fantastic no sharpness there at all so we're going to be beautiful on these we've got them sticking out just here so we do need to round over just a little bit more like i say i'll get a more coarse grit on there and we'll get them right up to the edge of the fingerboard and you won't feel them once this is all finished already that feels a lot better beautiful so next job will be polishing the frets i'll be using six or seven grits of sandpaper i'll explain more about that in the next part of the video. Fret polishing, not the most exciting job in the world, but not the worst job in the world as well. And I've already been across with some 600 grit. Before I did that, I rolled the edges of the frets with some more 600 grit. Just this piece just used for this purpose, rolling over the frets, bringing these, softening the edges, softening the bevels, and softening the edges right up against the fingerboard there. So that's all done. Then I've been across with some 600 grit, just polishing the frets. It's a matter of getting over the top of the fret, getting in at the corners, far side first, then near side. I always adapt latex gloves to do this job. I only really polish with these two fingers, so the other two fingers I leave intact. The ones I cut so I can get some, actually feel what's going on around me. And uh, I'm going to move on to the next grit some 800 grits, so we're going through with 6 grits, 6, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500 and 2000. Um, just grab this here, make sure we've got the right one. Turn, there you go, this is 800, just on the 600, and like I've just shown you, over the top, in at the corners or edges, just use a small part of the paper and move on to the next bit, over to the next fret. It's going to take me a while. I do have, I don't know how many frets there are on this. But anyway, quite a lot. Time six. So we'll finish off with steel water. I'm going to crack on, get all these done. Polish for two reasons. One, to remove the scratches. Two, to bring them to a nice shine. Like I say, it's going to take me a while, so I'm going to crack on with this. Once it's done, I'll come back and show you. I'll come back when I'm ready to go across with the um, finest grade steel wool, and we'll bring these up to a beautiful shine. I've cracked on a bit and got the frets done because I've had quite a busy day today, so I've not had time to be faffing about stopping and starting the camera, blah, 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 blah. But frets have been polished with seven, six grits of paper. 
Finished off with the finest grade steel wool. I'm just about to peel the tape off. So you see to get you get to see the benefits of all of my hard work. And you'll see why I put a strip of tape down the side down the edge of a neck before I put these between the threads because that way I can just peel up this way. And it's a uh, can be a bit fiddly, but once this is up and get all of the uh, tape off more or less in one go, in one fell swoop, so to speak. So that's the kind of uh, kind of thing we're looking at. I'd say it won't all come off in one go, but most of it will come off. And you can see there's a lot of mojo on this neck. It has been used, there's a lot of wear. It makes edging these frets a little bit more difficult because you've got to bring them slightly in where the wood was worn away. But nothing too uh, difficult for me. And these frets look amazing. Almost out of place on the neck, but it's all about playability. So. Got a few more jobs to do. Still got to do the electrics, not done them yet. Fit a nut, once a nut's fitted and the electrics are done, we can put the neck back on the guitar. We'll cut the nut slots and we'll get it all set up. So, still quite a ways to go. Got a few more hours left in this, but those frets look fantastic. We're happy with those. go frets are done leveled edged beveled recrowned and polished just before I move on to the body and what we've got to do um, I'm going to show the neck again I fitted the knot last night uh, a bone knot I've had to hand carve it slightly it is it is a pre-slotted bone knot I've had to carve it and shape it to fit the edges properly we are glued in we're not cut to depth with the slots yet and we're not shaped properly um, we can't really do anything with the nut we can't shape it till we've got the strings on I know I need to reshape the top yet and we need to cut the slots so that's something that's going to be done later but the nut is in nice just wanted to show that before we move on so I was planning to get straight on with the electrics this morning I've got my solder and iron out my Hakko FX888 but I remember there's something I've got to do before I wire everything up so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this tape holding in the pit guard. You remember I already lined everything with copper shielding. Uh, I've soldered every little spot to make sure we have continuity all the way through from there to there to there to there. Every single spot. You can put probes on any spot from this end to this end and you will get continuity all the way through. But there are no dead spots whatsoever. So we know we've got that right. The pickups are in, ready to wire everything. The pots are in ready to solder up the switches in ready to solder up so we're going to put that out of the way because because there is something i've got to do before i do any soldering and that is i'm going to set the bridge for starters can't do that yet and um, we do have a bridge set more or less where it needs to be that's good it's a brand new wilkinson bridge fits nicely um the uh pit guard fits around it nicely but what we've got to do is we have got to drill for the new claw spring now i'm going to have a look see if i've got an old claw that fits these two slots because if not I'm going to have to fill these holes and drill two more because the new claw spring we've got in there is actually thinner or it's not as wide as that one and it means I'm going to have to drill some extra holes and obviously I'm going to want to fill those other holes in I may have an old claw spring knocking about I'd be surprised if I didn't but I don't recall seeing one but I have various bits and bobs knocking about in drawers all over the place and I'm hoping I do have a spare claw spring. I don't need to have anything in these drawers down here which is a bit of a shame. Oh my gosh, is that another oak bridge type 
plumbing's there. Uh, this is a nice trimmer I've got there. Maybe I could have used that, I don't know. It's a walking so But anyway, claw spring. Do I have any? I don't appear to have any claw springs knocking about. They're not claw springs. Claw whatevers. What we got over here. Which is a bit of a shame. It means I've got to pick that one. Bit of a new one, should I say. It's an old bridge. Oh, I'll just use the old one because that already works there's no reason to put a new one on there if the holes are thinner so I'm going to use the old one anyway now I will need to thread this through for an earth that's fine I'm going to use that I'm going to use that older. so no worries I'm not going to, have to drill any more holes um, I'm just going to show here we will with this if I show the new claw that came with this It doesn't line up with the holes up. I'm going to have to fill those and re-drill. And it wouldn't work because we would be drilling half holes. So I'm not going to use the new one. I am going to use the old one with the old screws. Let's see where we are. Something else I've got to look for as well is a um, string tree. I do have some string trees knocking about somewhere, some chrome ones. The one on this guitar is a black one that went with the black knot. Well, I'm not, we don't have a black knot anymore. But there you go, this has solved that problem. Let's grab a screwdriver. Do I have something out? I do. I don't know how far out this claw spring, uh, claw needs to be. We're going to leave the screws out just about an inch. And we'll take it from there, see where we are. Did I put a hole? Yes, I did. Ah, there you go. That's fantastic. That can go to the back of a pot, or we can just solder it to any of these, any of the copper tape. Anyway, so that's good. So that is in. Please about that. Now then, I need to move that across. Why is that decided to stick there? Okay. to a drawing board with this. Something I could have done off camera. I've just only just remembered I've got to do this so uh, why is that like that? Talk to myself thinking aloud now. There you go, there we are, that's where we need to be. My goodness, talk about making things difficult for yourself. Five springs. Anyway, regarding the springs, I don't know how many I'm going to use. I don't even know how I'm going to set the tremolo yet. I've not decided. Just going to stick some springs in. Go with three for now. That's all nice. So there you go. Just 
check the tremolo. Beautiful, nice amount of resistance there. May need to loosen these screws just a little. I don't know how I'm going to set this yet. I imagine we will set it for um, both positions. So we're going to angle it up slightly so I can use pullback and we can dive bomb. I need to go and check my notes to find out exactly what I'm going to do. But anyway, that's that. That's not going to be a problem. That's going to be quite easy from now on. So now I can move on to doing all of the wiring. We know we've got a good Faraday cage here. Um, you know, rather than just talk about it, I might as well prove it. So let me just grab my multimeter. And it won't hurt to test and check everything anyway. So bear with me while I just get everything set. You can see that was going to turn it on to BPO vision. That should be BPO vision. Let's give it a taste. Oh, I should have used my probes. Doesn't matter. These will do. Let's go in there, over there. Oh, we've got a dead spot. Is that a dead spot? Hang on a minute. We do have a dead spot. I didn't know that. That's great that we've found that. Means I have to just put a blob of solder. Oh, I've just found one, found a dead spot. I can see where it is as well. It's a tape I used as a cover. I've just forgot to put run a bit of solder on there. Let's do that right now. I'll turn the solder iron on. Bear with me a second. Try and grab this all in and get in and wear the camera. I can see the actual bit. I place over a big blob of solder there. I'm using some Duratool 6040, I believe. So, yeah, 60 tin, 40 lead with the uh, 2% rosin core or flux. So we are using my Hakko. We are up to 370 degrees centigrade. I should just be able to flow a little bit of solder. Can I see the join there? Let's try it there. Just a little blob of solder there. And let's test again with the probe. So it's a good job we did check that because there was a dead spot in there. Still not there, so I've missed where I need to be. I can see it there also. It's not going to hurt, put a little bit of solder down there. Okay, let's try again. And there you go. We have continuity in that area where we were missing it before. Check everywhere for dead spots. So we have continuity everywhere. We have no dead spots. That is now a fully functioning, working Faraday cage. We have shielding everywhere. And there you go, proof is in the pudding. Job done, so that's all done. So we are now ready to go and wire the pickups and the controls. So I'm gonna crack on with that. I'll come back and show you results when I've done.
So we are just about ready to put the guitar back together. I have finished wiring up the electrics and just explain things here. We've got a black knob on there because that's to show it's a blend pot, master tone, master volume, five way switch. Uh, we have a 0.022 capacitor on the tone. Everything's earthed. We have a treble bleed kit on the volume, which means when we roll the volume off, we got to, we're not going to lose treble. Everything's wired up pretty nice and nice and neat in there. Everything's tied up. That's ready to go back in the guitar. I just need to solder a wire, this wire from the claw spring to um, the back of the volume pot. And then these two wires will be for the input jack going through to where the jack is. Um, neck is ready to be fitted with the nut on there. So easy part next, get it all um, back together. Test everything. If I'm going to test the electrics before, once I've got this soldered back, back in and my jack in there, I'm going to test the electrics before I build the guitar back up. Then we're going to get it all back together, get some strings on, and we'll proceed to the next part, the final part, which will be setting up. It's getting really exciting with this guitar. Now I've got everything back on the guitar. I also found a chrome string tree, which I've put on there. It's had a black one on there before. So I've put that one on there, that's absolutely fine. And look at it, it's looking brilliant. It's got all the mojo on the side of the neck that was already there through play, which is brilliant. Fresh, can't feel them at all, it's fantastic. It's really, really looking the part. But I am at a, oh, but not a crossroads, I can't really go on anymore, so I know I have a tremolo has been set up. But there you go, we've got the locking tuners back on. One thing with this, these locking tuners have pins at the back that go in a small hole. This one, the pin was missing off the back of a tuner. I had a look at the back of the neck and it was still in the hole. So it's still in the guitar and it's still in the tuner base itself. So it isn't going to cause a problem. It's just come away from the tuner itself. Nothing I can do about that. So we're going to leave that as is. But yeah, really, really looking the part now. I've tested the electrics out of the guitar. Absolutely fine. Everything works. The blend pot works. I'll explain how the blend pot does work. On 10, it is off. Click it from a detent on nine, it's low volume, and you just roll it into full volume. So zero is full volume on these. 10 is off, nine is on. You roll it that way, it doesn't actually work that way. Sorry, tell a lie, 10, that position there is off. It's not even in 10, if we look at the one. That is off, that comes on, then you just roll in the volume. Works really, really well. In this position, you've just got the neck pick up, you can blend the bridge in. In this position where you've got the neck and the middle, you can blend the bridge in. In the middle, it is just middle. In position two, it's these two pickups, you can blend in the neck. And in this position one, it's just a bridge pick up, you can blend in the neck. So you can have these two, you can have any combination. You can have all three, these two, these two, and these two. And again, I repeat, all three. So really, really good combinations here. So, um, I can get some strings on if I want to. I'm going to move on to something else because I've just had a guitar come down from Scotland uh, for work. So uh, it's just been delivered. So I'm going to do an unboxing video on that one. Make sure everything's wonky dory inside and we've got no problems with it. But it's a small indentation in the box, but it looks to be pretty solid. So I don't think there's any problem with that. So I'm going to move on to that. Once Dan has got back to me about this, let me know how he wants the treble setting up and what gauge strings he's going to use. Uh, we will finish this one off. All good. We now have the strings on the guitar uh, to tension, in tune, and we're going to cut the nut slots. We're not going to cut them to the correct depth, we're just get, we're going to get them pretty close. This nut is really quite high, so with the strings to tension, like I said, I've checked the um, intonation at the 12th fret, that's fine. We are, we've not got the action perfect at the 12th fret, but we are pretty close. Um, we're about 1.7 millimetres on the bass side, about 1.5 on the treble side, maybe a little bit over. We're going to cut the nut slots, and I've got my Hosco nut slotting files here, 1046 set. Uh, we don't have an exact 1046 set. We'll be going 10, 13, 17. I have a 10, 13, 16. Uh, we'll just slightly angle the 16 to widen it a little. 13, get these ones I don't need out of the way for a minute. 16. And 10 for the treble side. Bass side, we've got a 28, not a 26, a little bit wider. I have a 46 and a 36. So we're going to 
cut these slots to round about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters uh, height over the first fret. We can always go and change that again a little bit later. I'll be looking for 0 0.3 millimeters this side, 0 0.2 that side to begin with. Uh, it's a pre-slotted knot. I have carved it and fitted it properly. Um, the slots are already there. We just need to deepen them to the right depth. What I'm going to be doing is, I don't want to be cutting into the fret, so I'm going to take a piece of tape for each string. And just tape over the frets on the string I'm working on. Just so we don't scratch into a fret there. So just a small piece. I'll be removing this to measure. I just don't want to be hitting frets. So quite high there, gonna need a feeler gauge. Because I've got some tape on there, I'm still gonna pick a 0.3 mil this side. Just gonna measure the side there. Uh, just bear with me a second because my wife's making a noise back. It's twice my wife's done that lately. Right, 0 0.3 file. I can find one. There you go. We're just going to have a quick look. And we are oh, stupidly high. So we're going to remove the string. I'm going to take the 46 file. 0 0.046, that's the string size. And we're going to carve into the knot. We we'll go more or less horizontal, we can angle back slightly. Just because I've got to cut a lot, I'm not going to go gung-ho. These are a set of old strings, these aren't the strings that are going on the guitar. But I like to use these as much as I can, just for um, mock setups. And you see with the tape over here, I'm not going to cut into the fret. Bone nut this. We'll have a tuner in just to get close to where we need to be. Still quite a ways to go with that. So you get the idea, and I'm gonna be doing this for all of the strings. Nice, even slot. So each file corresponds to a string width. We are going with a 1046 set on air as requested by the owner. Still very high. Like I say, take time. Go too deep, you're replacing the knot, and that's annoying. And it takes time, and it's going to cost you money as well. This file seems to want to, it seems to be sticking a little bit. Oh, that's better. Like I say, no need to go gung ho. It's not a race. buzzing and that for me is close enough so I'm good with that one we're going to move on to the next one the 36 clean the file put it back in its sleeve we will make some fine adjustments later on when we've got the setup right but we're pretty much where we want to be with that so the next one a string that's a 0.036, if you can see that. Ways to go there. If I can get the tape across there. I shall do so. If not, I'm not too worried about it. I can work without tape. I've been doing this long enough. I won't be, but there you go. It's 
still way too high, which I'm new anyway. Always wipe the file and carry on. So you see how it works. I'm going to carry on until all of these are done. Once they're done, I'm going to set the guitar up properly, come back, check again, and if I'm happy, I'm going to remove these strings. We're going to recarve the top of it, not reshape it. We're going to put the new strings on, get the setup done, and we will be finished. Okay, we can do away with the tea towel because we have cut the nut slots. I've zoomed the camera out as much as it will go. The reason I'm leaving it here though is you're going to get to see um, the setup or what I'm going to do on the setup. And I've still got these old strings on. I do like to use an old set with some long stems on so I can thread them through. And this is just to cut the nut and what have you. So I'm just going to show where we are. I have a 0 .2, 0 0.02 feeler gauge on this side. And we've got an O3 this side, and just rattling, that means we're nice and low. We have a 0.3, so I said trouble finding this 0.3. I'm going the wrong way, of course I'm going the wrong way. There you go. 0.3 this side. So there you go, nice and low above there. We've not shaped the knot yet, we're not, we'll do that once these strings are off. And what we're going to do is, we're going to check the setup with the strings on with the nut slots now caught. Now I have checked the intonation and we're pretty much where we need to be. A bit flat on there, so we're gonna to need to move the saddle towards the neck. I know I've mentioned this on a few videos, I'm going to tell you how I remember which way to move the saddle. If the note on the 12th fret is flat, we move to the left, as I look at it, move to the left. Flat and left are four letters. If it's sharp, if the note on the 12th fret is sharp, we move to the right, which is five letters. So I remember move the saddle to the right or away from the neck. If it's sharp, move it left or towards the neck if it's flat. Left, flat, right, sharp. Really, really easy. Four letters and five letters. That one's perfect. Sharp, so I'm going to move it away to the, to the right if it will go anymore. Yeah, we'll go. I've got plenty of adjustment in there. as I look at it. So we have the intonation set. Not check the actual 12 fret, I've not checked the relief in the neck, and I've not checked the radius yet on the saddles. So more things to be done. First we're going to check the relief in the neck. That was pretty much where I like it to be. About 0 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 under between 5 and 7 fret, so 6. 
So a bit much there. Oh, hang on, which one we got on there? Here we go, no points. We've got too much relief. We need to straighten that neck. Then we get 0.25. Here we go. Yeah, too much in there. So we need to straighten the neck. So we're going to take a, I believe a 560, is it five? I'll tell you a minute. No, 316th Allen wrench. And we're going to straighten the neck up. Put the Allen wrench in there, give a turn, good quarter turn there. turn so from there to about there that should be pretty much okay So I've got the nut slots where I want them to be. I think I've got the relief where I want it to be. Yeah, it's just touching nice. That's beautiful. Uh, next, I'm going to check the action at the 12th fret. <clears throat> I'm going to do just the outside strings because once these two are set to where I want them to be with the neck set right, the nut slots right, forget the action right here. I want to be 1.75 mil this side, 1.5 mil that side. If they are right, all we've got to do is check the radius. So I'm going to have a quick look, I'm going to lift the guitar to me, You're not, you can't see it, you've got to take my word for it. But we are really low there, we're down to about 1.4 and we are down to about 1mm on the far side. So what I'm going to do now is, we're going to take the correct arm wrench and we're going to raise these saddles on the, far, on the, 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 the first one and the sixth one until we've got those where we want them. Once we've got them where we want them, we're going to raise all the others in the middle a bit higher. We're going to drop them all onto a radius gauge. So we match this radius here with this radius here. That will then be set up. So um, what have I done with that Allen wrench? It will be probably in the box with all the other bits, which it is. Allen wrench that came with the uh, tremolo. I'll leave the tuner in. This looks like it's a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Adjusting the saddle height, and because we're low here by about probably half a millimetre, we're going to raise a millimetre on this side. And raising a millimetre at the end, or we'll raise it half a millimetre in the middle, which is the 12th fret, is the centre. So I'm just going to have a quick look at that. <clears throat> I'll leave the guitar there, I can do it from here. see that's the problem oh there you go that's pretty good there quite happy with that <clears throat> do the same on the first string now regarding the tremolo the guy doesn't use the tremolo much so I'm going to leave it more or less flat to the body Once it's set up for very light use, so we will just adjust the springs at the back. I'm going to check the action again, I'm going to hold the guitar up so you can't see again. Just take my word for it. A little bit high on that side, just about perfect. In fact, we're a little bit low on the treble side. So, again, bring it up a little. I don't want to go too much higher than this on there. So that's it. So I'm going to now gonna bring all these higher and get set up ready for using a radius gauge. Once I'm ready to do that, I'll bring you back in. We'll zoom in a little. I'll bring you back in and I'll show you how we set up the radius on the bridge. So I've shown you most of the setup bar <clears throat> setting 
the radius on the bridge or on the saddles. So what I've done is I've set the two outside ones, string one, string six, they where I need them to be. So I've gone higher with all of the other four middle ones. And all we need to do to get the radius set right is take the radius gauge, nine and a half inch radius that matches the radius of the fingerboard. I'm going to put it under the strings. Don't matter which way you do it, just go in the middle, under the strings, and all of these should be higher than the two outside ones, which they are. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the Allen wrench and we're going to drop each string onto the top of the radius gauge here. That one just about is there. So we don't have a lot to do because they're only just slightly over. So all I'm going to do is just drop ever so, ever so slightly, just so they hit the top of the radius gauge. And that one's there. And it's nice to keep these saddles even. People do them at angles sometimes. I don't. I set them evenly. Might not look as good, but it's the right way to do it. So there you go. And I'm thinking we're pretty much there. This one's a little bit high. As it is. And that, to me, looks like they're exactly where they need to be. So all I need to do now is go and check with my eyes, see that they're level. This side's a little bit higher, so I'm just going to drop this down an oomph. Very, very tiny amount. Just probably 16th of a turn. I'm going to raise this one a 16th of a turn. And that's pretty good. That one was pretty level, that one's a little bit higher in the middle. Do the same again, just take it down a notch. Bring it up a notch on the opposite side so we bring it level. That's pretty good. Same with this one. Bring it up on this side. We'll have to get the iron wrench in there. And that, my friends, is done. So we're not in tune yet, but what we have done is we've cut the nut slots, we've set the action at the 12th rep, we've set the relief. We've done the radius and we've done the intonation. So what we're going to do is now we're going to bring the guitar back to tune. The reason why it's not tuned in, it's not plugged in. One thing I haven't done yet is I haven't set the pickup heights yet. These are not the strings we're going with, these are just set up strings. I have plenty of old strings knocking about I use for setting up. So we're going out of tune a little bit, that's because I've not stretched the strings in. I've not checked the strings at the back of the tremolo yet. I think they're down tight enough, they certainly are. I'm going to remove one of those. I've got five in the back, I'm probably only going to need four. So I'll send them with one back as a spare. So again, looking at everything overall, I know all the electrics are working. This is the blend, this has got a detent right there. I'll put that as zero. So as you take it off detent, it cuts the pickup, whichever pickup where we got the selector. If I've got that on neck pickup, this will blend in the bridge pickup. So I'll blend the pickup with that be a low volume all the way up to high volume. Could have done with a reverse knob on there, but it works. Same again, if we have it in that position, we've got the bridge pickup on, we can blend in the neck. We can also do it in positions two and four. So that's a blend part. This is a master tone for all three pickups and master volume again for all three pickups. Great little mod. Like I say, I've got to set the height of the pickups yet for volume. Still need to cut the nuts, uh, reshape the nut, which I've not done yet. So I'm just going to check the setup again, check it on my knee, check the string height at the 12th fret. 
beautiful there. A little bit lower on that side, but we should be all right. Very nice. So we've got no buzz anywhere. So we're not ringing out, the action's beautiful, uh, everything's all set up. So all I've got to do now is set the pickle height for volume, remove the strings, reshape the top of the knot, put a new set of strings on, stretch them in, remove a spring from the back and we will be done. So it's been a great project this one, really enjoying it, uh, but it will be done pretty soon. So it's getting exciting. Finishing off a couple of things. One thing I forgot to mention, we need to carve this nut because the slots are quite deep and I do like the string to be two thirds in the slot, one third out on the base side. So we're going to slightly reshape this knot. I've got a few files here. I'm going to go with the coarse one and go to things a little bit finer afterwards. Nothing too strenuous, nice and simple. Concentrating just on this side of the knot, the, the base side. too bad. Just eyeballing. Some people polish the knots, I don't. I'm quite happy just to finish them off with files. Pretty good. Just flatten this spot between strings two and three here. Yeah, that's looking really nice. So I'll go with something a little bit more, a bit smoother. And then I'll finish off with my number four cut Swiss file. And that is looking really, really good. I'm really happy with that. Swiss file, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round over the ends with this one. Move it off. Just check this side, see if I'm happy with that. That's a nice round over there. On this side, do the same, just a few strokes. But I'm thinking that that. Yeah, we're really good there. That is nice. We have a knot cut really, really nice. That's it, I need to get some new strings on there now, stretch them in, and we are done. Morning fret friends, we are all done with this MIM um, strat, and wow, look at it. Just wonderful. So let me try and remember everything we've done to this guitar. So it came in, it was a blank canvas. Um, it came in without strings, obviously. It had a black knot on there, got rid of that. We've kept the tuners, which are, I believe, they are Spurs or locking tuners. I knew they were. I will just check in. So we kept the tuners, obviously. Um, we've refretted the neck using some. It's a. It's not hybrid wire. It is between vintage and modern. Modern being 2.8 mil wide. Vintage being about 2.3 wide. This is 2.5 fret wire of choice for me nowadays. 
is the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet at the moment. It's made by Sintoms and it's 25% nickel silver. Hard fret wire is 18% and regular fret wire is 12% nickel silver. So this is getting very hard. It's up to the hardness of, uh, I'd imagine, Jeskar Gold Evo, uh, which is very hard wearing, very long lasting. It's not quite as hard as stainless, but uh, we've done that. That's, look at that beautiful job, absolutely fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed doing this one. And uh, we've also swapped everything here. We have a brand new bridge, uh, a walking someone, all the ones in here. Uh, we also have swapped out the pickups, all the electrics, uh, new scratch plate. These are Iron Gear Texas Loco pickups. Uh, I have one of these in my Super Strat. Uh, I would have liked to have seen these pickups mixed up a little bit. I'd have gone Texas Loco probably in the middle and neck and something a little bit beefier in the bridge at my soul, but that's just me. But I think the guy wants vintage tones from this, so he's certainly going to get them. Beautiful looking thing. I know it's worn. Uh, one other thing we've done, you'll see very different coloured knobs on here, and that's because we've swapped the configuration around. Um, we have a master volume, a master tone for all three pickups, and this was once a tone, is now a blend pot. Uh, that's why I've put a black knob on there. And it has a, it's got a detent when it's off, and when you turn it on, you blend all the pickups in, and it, starts, it works backwards. So 10 is naught, and nine is one, and so on and so forth, till we get to naught, and it's nine or 10 on there, full volume. So that'll be off position on the detent. Once you click it on, you start blending pickups in, and that's low volume to high volume. So off is off, and the, the knob actually does work backwards. We should have put a reverse knob on there. But anyway, I'll explain how that works. So in position one, normally, with the blend off, position one, you've just got the bridge pickup. Position two, you've got these two pickups. Position three, just the middle. Position four, middle and neck. And position five, neck. But with the blend pot, position one, you've got bridge pickup, and you can blend in the neck pickup. So it gives you bridge and neck. In position two, you've got bridge and middle, you can blend in the neck, and you've got all three pickups on. And it works the same at the opposite end. So in position four, you've got these two on, you can blend the bridge in. In position five, you've just got the neck, and you blend the bri bridge in. So it's just a reverse action. So you're only really getting two more options, but your two more options are these two together, or all three. So it's giving you seven way instead of five way. A uh, great tonal option. Um, I'm sure it's going to come in useful, but that is it. Like I said, we we'll replace the bridge parts. We've gone for CTS um, vintage taper logarithmic pots. On no, we've gone logarithmic on the volume, linear on the tone, and we do have a linear, I believe, blend pot here. So it blends in from not from one to ten, goes one to ten. It doesn't jump in one position. So that is it. It's all done. We kept the original input jack. We've got a Wilkinson bridge there, sticking with the vintage style. Uh, the good thing about these Wilkinson bridges, they're only 34 quid, is you get a steel block on the back and five springs. So a beautiful looking thing. Oh, one thing I've done as well, I've also added a chrome string tree, which I've not charged for. Um, I also did buy some brand new knobs, but I've lost them. I don't know where they've gone. I haven't charged for them anyway. I never charged for the knobs. And I haven't charged for the, um, for the string tree. So I'm sure the owner's going to be very happy. I need to get this packaged up now and boxed back to Bristol because it's not going to, because of lockdown and that he can't get up here. Good thing is I only had one box. I've now got a second box. So I'm going to double box this. Which is which you have to do, by the way. If you're not sending it in a case, it has to be double boxed, otherwise your insurance doesn't cover you. I will likely be sending it by DHL, who are my choice, my favourite choice of shipping guitars. Reason being, I've always used UPS for many, many years, and they've always been absolutely fantastic, and they fully insure guitars, but their insurance has more than doubled in the last three years. To send a guitar fully insured up to a £1,000 would have cost about £30 four or five years ago. It now costs you £50. I can still send this for about, insured up to a thousand pound by the way, I can probably send this for 30 quid, guaranteed next day by DHL. So with me only insuring for about 20, for, for 500 quid, I could probably send this for around about 25 pounds back to Bristol. Uh, it will be insured, it will be proper boxed and proper, well just properly wrapped, it's the way I do things. Uh, I was reluctant to send this by courier in just one box. I would pref actually prefer to send it in a case in a box. But because I'm now a double box, I've told the guy, I've told uh, Dan that I'm not going to, I was going to send it, I was going to take the neck off and send him a set of strings and tell him it's set up. All you need to do is put strings on and stretch it in. And he could have done that, but now I'm going to send it as a whole guitar because I have it double box. I have plenty of padding to put in there and it ain't going to cost that much. So that is it. This one is all done. It's been a fantastic um, one to work on. Again, 
may not look much, but you know, the, the owner was told, why don't you just get a new neck rather than have it refretted? And he didn't want it, he wanted all that mojo, and it does have mojo, it's well worn on each side, so I had to work with frets round, but the frets are in absolutely beautiful. Uh, you're not gonna get better than that, are you? Why stick a new neck on it? Because then you're gonna have to get the body painted up and everything. He wants it, he wants to keep all that mojo, and it does have mojo. I have played this. Oh, one thing I've done, obviously, I'll put a brand new bow nut on there, hand carved. Uh, I've played this, and it's beautiful to play. I really, really like it myself. There are no, there's no fret buzzing out anywhere. Got a nice action on there. It's had a complete setup. You've seen everything on video. Uh, I, oh, one other thing I also did is I copper foiled the inside to make a Faraday cage. Checked it absolutely everywhere. It is full connection, every single part. There are no dead spots in there. So we have a very, very low buzz, low hum. If any, you can hardly hear it at all. Uh, which is fantastic and uh, yeah lovely looking thing i would be proud to own this myself i know the guy now has got a lot of money i know what he paid for the guitar um he's also bought the pickups i would imagine 270 for the it's probably this is probably now cost him 800 pounds in fact with a tune is probably nearly 900 pounds and yeah that is a lot you could have bought yourself a second hand fantastic condition fender standard deluxe uh but end of the day he loves the guitar and he spent money on it and he wants it and he wants to play it and he loves it and that's it and you can't knock that at all what's a guitar worth it doesn't matter what it's worth does it it's what it is worth to the player i bought guitars like this i bought guitars for 300 quid and put four five hundred quid worth of uh, upgrades on them and done the work and i've sold them for 600 quid uh, it doesn't matter if you remember i did a, um, a mexican strat a couple of years ago it was my own i put gold everything on it uh, gold frets gold hardware gold bridge I put mother of pearl inlays in there, made it really, really fantastic, and I sold that for next to nothing. I didn't, I certainly didn't make any money on it. But end of the day, you know, it's all about what the client wants. The client is going to be very happy with this. I know it. It looks absolutely wonderful. I don't think that brand new pick god looks out of place either. And I think this sets it off. We're going to black knob on there because it's really, people are going to ask about that. Why have a black knob on there when they're white? Blah blah blah. And I we do. But anyway, that is it. I'm prattling on. I'm just getting just romanticising here on my own on a Saturday morning. Um, I've got other things to do. So I'm going to tie this video up, but before I do go, I need to remind you my website, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. I'm Victor, I am your fret friend, and until the next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.